Hi there, I have another proof for you today. Here's the drawing, and what we are trying to prove is that DC is congruent to BC. Now, that's probably going to involve getting some triangles congruent so that we can take those parts off of those triangles. So let's see what we might be able to do. Uh, a possibility would be to get this triangle congruent to this triangle. That is not looking entirely possible right at the moment. We do have an angle to an angle, and we certainly do have this side to itself, but we don't have another part. So let's look at another possibility. These two sides are also contained in the big triangles, this one and this one. Now, it looks more possible to do that because you have this angle to this angle, this side to this side, so we already have two parts, and then we also have, if we could get, the combination of these two angles congruent to the combination of these two angles, we would have angle side angle. So let's work on that and see if we can do it. You have a lot of given information, as you can see. One is congruent to three, two is congruent to four, five is congruent to six, and AD is congruent to AB. So let's work from there. Um, the key is going to be these two angles right here. So let's say angle ADC is equal to, or we're going to have to use measure of because we're dealing with equals. So the measure of angle ADC is equal to the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 plus measure of angle 4. And let's do the same thing down here. <clears throat> the measure of angle ABC ABC is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, and all of that is the angle addition postulate. All right. Now, step three, we would like to be able to get angle ADC congruent to angle ABC. What we have at the moment, and I think we're going to have to change some of these into equals rather than congruent, measure of angle 1 equals measure of angle 3. Uh, measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 4. That's definition of congruent. Now, if that's the case, then I can substitute into either one of these and get them to, to read the same. I'll show you what I mean. Measure of angle 1 and 3 are the same, so if I could substitute measure of angle 1 in place of measure of angle 3, so measure of angle 1 plus, then 2 and 4 are equal, so I could substitute 2 for 4, plus measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle ADC. So let me just say again, I took, because I had a measure of angle 3 and a measure of angle 4, I replaced them with 1 and 2 because they're equal to 3 and 4. All right, now step 5, I have measure of angle 1 plus 2 equals ADC and measure of angle 1 plus 2 equals ABC. So I should be able to say now measure of angle ADC equals measure of angle ABC. And the reason for that would be substitution or transitive. And up here, these were substitutions. So we'll just say substitution there. Number six, if I have ADC equal ABC, that's this big angle here equal this big angle here, let's turn them back into congruence. So angle A, start that again here, angle ADC is congruent to angle ABC. All right, now what we have, this is congruent to this, we have angle side angle to get the two big triangles congruent. <clears throat> and uh, so I can now say triangle ADC is congruent to triangle <clears throat> ABC. And that would be because of angle side angle. 
And this one here, did we have a reason for this? That was definition of congruent. <clears throat> now, there was an easier way. <clears throat> and I did it this way because I wanted to show you how you can combine angles to get big angles congruent when the little angles are congruent. But actually an easier way would have been to say AC is congruent to itself, and then we would have side, angle, side, to side, angle, side. Fewer steps, same outcome, and now the last step here, if you can see this down here, I will put it at the bottom, <clears throat> is uh, DC is congruent to BC, and the reason for that is C, P, C, T, C. Okay, that concludes the proof. Thank you.